4K 240 hertz or 2K 480 hertz. What a time to be alive. Not only is there an end game monitor, there are end game monitors these days, depending on what it is you're looking for. Do you want blazing fast refresh rates for perfect motion clarity? Or do you want pixel density that's so tight that both games and text are gonna look sharp and detailed AF? Well, ASUS sponsored this video so I could make up my mind and get ready for the RTX 5090, whenever that might launch, by sending over their new fourth generation QD OLED monitor, the PG27 UCDM. This thing is so new. It doesn't even have a retail box yet. As for what's inside the box, it slices, it dices, it even has what so many of you have been waiting for, ultra high bitrate or UHBR20 on a 27 inch display. So I get every frame burned into my retinas at a full up to 80 gigabit per second. That's right, this is the world's first 4K, 240 hertz, 27 inch QD OLED display that isn't limited by display stream compression. And it's all mine. The only problem is, I don't think even my PC is worthy of such a display. We're gonna get to this in a moment, but first, the first thing's first. And the first thing is we've gotta take my current 480 hertz monitor out. As much as I have been absolutely loving this thing, if the rumors are true, then the 5090 should be the first true high refresh rate 4K gaming card. Isn't it wild to think how just a few short years ago, we were examining whether there was a clear advantage to upgrading to a cutting edge 240 Hertz display. And now I'm sitting here downgrading my 480 Hertz display to 240 Hertz. But I get a lot in return. I get over two times the resolution because it's 4K and with no compression. And because it's OLED, sure, OLED is expensive, but it's got amazing HDR capabilities thanks to its inky blacks and high peak brightness these days, not to mention accurate colors and absolutely incredible motion clarity. Like it used to be that even at the high end, you were choosing between different technologies that had really important trade-offs. You could have VA with bad viewing angles, you could have IPS with bad contrast, or you could have TN, which was fast, but <laughs> just not as good for image quality. No more. Now that I've got this out of the box, it's a perfect time to show you guys the IO. We've got dual HDMI inputs for your game console or what have you, a USB-C input with 90 watts of power delivery, so you can use DisplayPort Alt Mode with your laptop, and of course, the big star of the show, our DP input with up to 80 gigabit per second bandwidth. That's right, folks, DP 2.1. We'll talk more about it later. For now, let's get this assembled and turned on. At the base of the tool stand, we've got Asus's little desk projection thing. You can 3D print your own lenses and throw them in there, project whatever you want onto your desk, and nipple-based navigation for our excellent ease of use. Now, one potential drawback of OLED is of course image retention and burn-in. But OLED care and protection has come a long way. For example, the PG27 UCDM has a Neo proximity sensor, which basically means that if you get up from the desk and forget to turn it off or put it to sleep, it'll automatically swap to a black screen. Okay, that's pretty cool. We're gonna have to try that. But even if you didn't have it, most media outlets have found that you really need to drive these things into the ground to get properly noticeable retention. And most of them, like this one come with a three year warranty anyway. Let's fire it up. Okay, this is gonna be a bit of an elephant in the room when it comes to DisplayPort 2.1 with UHBR20 or ultra high bit rate 20. See this? <laughs> yeah, it gives us 80 gigabit per second of bandwidth so that we don't have to deal with any compression, but um, <laughs> just like any other cable standard, ethernet, USB, HDMI, the more bandwidth we get, the shorter the cable has to be in order to maintain signal integrity. Now there are some longer fiber optic versions out there, but selection's limited and they're pretty expensive. So my computer needs to be like a, a right there. <laughs> also, problem number duh, is that while DisplayPort is physically forwards and backwards compatible, you see, I can take my brand new DisplayPort 2.1 cable and put it in my existing GPU, the only card that will actually support the new higher data rates 
is AMD's Workstation W7900 Pro. That's a $3,500 card that's not meant for gaming. So if you want to game over this connection, you're going to have to wait for the availability of the RTX 5090. You know what you won't have to wait for? The Tech Bro Vest from LTTstore.com. Much pocket, very comfort. <laughs> yeah, it's clear to get the most out of this thing. I am going to need a GPU upgrade, but there's nothing to upgrade to today. So for now, let's see what it can do with an RTX 4090. By default, that is not 240 hertz, but my goodness. Now, as someone who uses gaming monitors predominantly, um, I don't really dabble in 4K because there aren't GPUs yet that can really drive it at a high refresh rate. So I haven't really looked at a 27 inch 4K display in a while, but that is, wow, is that ever dense. 166 pixels per inch. It's clean, it's sharp. Let's turn it up to 240 hertz and see if there's an immediate and obvious difference. Because the thing is, no display stream compression is obviously better, but we've already said in the past that picking out the difference between DSC and not DSC is not that easy. So can you use this thing if you just have an older GPU? I mean, you won't get the frame rates for it, but you can connect it with your cute little cable. Oh, does Doom Eternal have a chance? 4K 240 on a 49? I don't think so. I'm kind of thinking, Ploof, maybe for today what we do is we go at 4K, okay? So we get that clarity, but we just, I don't know, turn the details down to eliminate GPU bottlenecking? It's wild to me that you can just have like HDR and really great color and per almost perfect pixel response times. Like it's, like I said, what a time to be alive. All right. At medium settings, we can get 330 frames per second. It's so sharp. I know, it's crazy sharp. Like, I keep thinking, oh yeah, end game monitor, whoever needs a new monitor, and then they keep coming up with new monitor and it keeps being like insane. Like insane, the level of improvement that we're getting from generation to generation here. It looks, dare I say, perfect. It's probably pretty close. It's so sharp, dude. I know. Like if you're like, if you're in there, you know, you're like in close, you're, you're gaming boys. Dude, so sharp. God, the clarity is so, like you do a whip and it's just instant. Oh, it's perfect, right? Actually, I mean, oh, the P word is such a dangerous word, but. <laughs> oh, here's something we should talk about. Obviously this thing supports variable refresh rate with G-Sync, but some folks out there have complained pretty loudly about VRR flicker on OLEDs. Personally, I haven't found that it bothers me that much, but if you are the kind of person who's affected by it, ASUS claims their new anti-flicker 2.0 with dynamic brightness algorithm should reduce that flicker by up to 20%. Like I said, um, not really impacted by it, but neat. Let's, uh, let's fire up something that we can like run at a lot of FPS. I'm bad at this game, I'm done. Oh, come on! Come on, what was that? Not even getting that many FPS, man. Really? Yeah, like 220. <laughs> we need new GPUs, even for flipping Counter-Strike. Dude, it's so responsive. 240 Hertz, it's a lot. 4K, it's sharp. If I miss, it's on me. Sometimes I don't miss. We motion plus, hey, 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 no, 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 oh, sh I'm stuck. Run, run away! <laughs> we don't have to play video games on this thing, which is good because not all of us are great at video games. Wait, is Halo on here? Oh, tempting, but no, we're gonna check out something else first. Damn. If you're the kind of person who watches movies at your monitor, which a lot of people are. I mean, I was for years and years. Oh, I have the perfect add-on for this. DMS sent me over his Project Omega headphones, which obviously the headphone jack on this monitor is not gonna be the world's greatest headphone amp or anything like that. But I haven't gotten a chance to try them yet. And I really, really, really wanna try them. And while I'm enjoying this beautiful footage, seems like as good a time as any. I'm looking for the proximity sensor thing here and you can dial in both your OLED anti-flicker and your HDR format. So you can select HDR 10 or Dolby Vision. 
Oh, here it is. Neo proximity sensor. Okay. So depending on how close you sit to your display, like if you're a lean back and watch movies kind of person, you can set it to not kick in until you're 1.2 meters away. So that would be about, about four feet. Uh, let's set it to that. Screen off, uh, uh, one minute. Oh, oh, look at that. Hey, that was a minute. All right, well, hold on, hold on. But what I want to know is, will it detect a cat? Yes. <laughs> hey, that's about 1.2 meters, right? Yeah, that was actually really cool. Okay, that's, that's kind of nice. Because as much as I'd love to be able to rely on windows to handle power states and turn monitors on and off properly, I've actually had a, a big issue with these LAN computers where the monitor will still be getting some kind of signal so the backlight stays on, even though the image goes dark. I'm just kind of like, oh, what? like, if that can just be handled by the monitor, I consider that a win. <laughs> this is no longer required as part of our video plan, but uh, I'm gonna fire up some Halo Infinite. And I gotta say, man, like I am blown away at how good display stream compression is. Cause remember, we're not even like running this thing properly at its full potential, but it really makes me think like with UHBR 20, are we gonna be able to do like 600 Hertz? A thousand Hertz using DSC? Future's gonna be awesome. All right, this could affect my ability to click heads a little bit, but uh, she's my sweetie, so. <laughs> oh, here we go. Let's go. <laughs> it's a rock, paper, scissors thing, okay? Rocket launcher beats sword, sword beats starting gun, starting gun beats nothing. You know how it is. Anywho, I said, when I saw the pricing of the 40 series, that I was not gonna go 40 series. And I haven't, I have held true to that. But I never said that after waiting an entire generation, I wouldn't be willing to drop a bunch of money on a 50 series. I think a 50 series, one of these, might be in my future in the next little bit here. Thanks again, Asus, for sending over this absolutely incredible display. If you guys enjoyed this one, maybe you'll enjoy the one where we looked at their 480 Hertz, 1440p monitor. That one, the one that I just took off my desk, also an incredible choice. What a time to be alive.